Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to Photo Show. We're going to do another one of our Nikon user guides today. And in this episode, we're going to look at using the mode dial on your camera. For this example, we're using a Nikon D7100, but it works exactly the same for a Nikon D7200 and a lot of other cameras across the Nikon range. If you're using a different make of camera, some of the names and symbols might be different, but the functions will be very similar. So if you cross-reference that with your manual, you should be able to get the best out of it. Remember, if you like what you see on the photo show, please comment, like, and subscribe in the boxes below. Let's have a look at the video on using the mode dial on your DSLR camera. Right, so what we're going to look at today is this area of the camera, which is your mode dial. And we're looking at this on a Nikon D7100, but this will apply exactly the same to a Nikon D7200, as the camera bodies are exactly the same. It'll also apply to a lot of the cameras across the Nikon range, because they all have very similar features. Uh, and with other makes of camera, they will have pretty much the same features on here. They may have different names or different uh, letters denoting what they are, but this should apply to most DSLR cameras and give you an idea of exactly what each of these modes do. So let's start off, and as you can see now, the camera's actually set in auto. And auto is probably what the camera came from out of the box. And if you're new to photography, it's probably where you'll start working with the camera. Now, auto does exactly what it sounds like it does. It uh, takes care of all of the settings for you. It will take care of your shutter speed. It will take care of your aperture. And if the light's too low when you push the shutter, it will, let's see if we can get this in, pop up the onboard flash and fire if required. So if the camera thinks that the light is too low when you're in auto, it will automatically pop the flash up and add the flashlight into the image to give you enough light to take your photo. So that's basically, you know, a, a starting point. If you just want to use the camera like a point and shoot and just pick it up, push the shutter and take an image, auto is where you'll start. But really what you want to be doing is, you know, starting to learn some of the other modes to get yourself out of using auto and having more control over your photography. The next one we have around here is the little symbol of the lightning bolt crossed out. And this is auto, but with the flash suppressed. So it does exactly the same as the auto settings, except now if we push the shutter, it won't lift the flash. It will just take a, an image without the flash at all. And this can be useful if you're, you know, working somewhere where you're not allowed to use flash photography. If you're in a museum, maybe you're at a wedding and they don't want a uh, flash going off in the church, then you could put it on the uh, auto suppressed flash and still get images, but obviously the flash won't fire. The one downside of this is if you're in low light, then the camera will automatically slow the shutter speed down to take the image which can then introduce camera shake because the camera isn't uh, held steady enough at a slow shutter speed. But that's basically the two auto settings. You've got auto, which is the, the, the green, which will take care of everything. And you've got auto suppressed flash, which is the little lightning bolt crossed out. And that will um, do the same as auto, except it won't allow the flash to fire. So that's the first two there. That, that's the, the simplest point. If you want to use the camera just as a point and shoot, that's the two that you would use. So let's turn it around. Just turn the, you push the button in the center and just turn the dial. And next we're coming around to P. And P is what's called programmed auto. And it works in a very similar way to the auto settings, except now you've got some degree of customability to it. If, for example, um, let's take a reading here. Okay, the reading here is showing that the camera would want to uh, fire the shutter speed at a 30th of a second with an aperture of 2.8. So we can now change some of the settings. If I use the, the back dial here, I can now, if I start to bring the shutter speed down, you can see that it's also changing the aperture for me. So as I lower the shutter speed down, it's, it's changing the aperture. So like auto, except it's allowing you to make some adjustments to the shutter speed and the aperture as you wish. The next one round, the S. Now the S stands for Shutter Priority Auto. 
uh, and it's quite often just called shutter priority. And what this does, this allows you to set your shutter speed. So you're controlling the shutter speed and the camera is then taking care of your aperture settings. So if we have a look again, you can see there that I'm on one hundredth of a second on the shutter speed. The um, aperture is flashing there because obviously it, it's, it's, the shutter speed is too fast for that aperture. So let's lower that aperture down. And you can see now, once we've got to a 20th of a second, it's giving us an aperture of 2.8. If I slow the shutter speed down more, you can see now that it's, it's as I slow the shutter speed down using the rear dial here, it's changing the aperture for us. So with shutter priority, you're in control of the shutter speed. So when would you use this? Let's say you are shooting uh, a sports event or some wildlife. And what you're looking for is a fast shutter speed so that you can freeze the action. So you've set your camera up to a shutter speed of, say, 250th of a second. The camera will now take care of the aperture. Whether the light changes or not, the camera will stay at 250th of a second and the aperture will adjust around that to give you the best exposure for that image. So you, you can control the shutter speed whether you want to freeze the image or um, let, let's say the opposite example, let's say you want to do some, some nighttime type shots where you want a slow shutter speed. You can slow the shutter speed right down. And as you sh slow the shutter speed down, the camera will adjust the aperture for you. So there we go. We're down to a, a, a slow shutter speed of one second. And that's saying in this lighting conditions that the camera would need to be at F13, F14, to get the shot for you. So that's shutter spree, shutter priority auto. Next one round is the A. And this is aperture priority auto. And this does the opposite way around. This allows you to choose the aperture you want to use and the camera will take care of the shutter speed. So in this case, let's have a look now where we are. We're on an aperture of 4.5 here at this shutter speed. So if I use the front dial now on the front of the camera here where my finger is, I can adjust the aperture. So what I'm changing now is the, the F number, your aperture, and the camera is now changing the shutter speed to allow us to give us that aperture. So why would you use the aperture priority? Let's say you're shooting uh, portraits. And what you want is a nice shallow depth of field. You want, you know, say 2.8. 2.8 to give you a nice shallow depth of field, to give you that nice blurry background. So all of your portraits look the same. You've all got the same depth of field. The camera will now take care of the shutter speed for you to give you the correct exposure for that aperture value. Uh, going the other way, if you wanted a really small um Aperture, you wanted a, a, a really large depth of field. Let's go to F22. Let's say you're shooting a landscape and you wanted everything to be in focus. You didn't, you wanted from the foreground to the background to be in focus and you're using like a, a, an aperture of F22. Then the camera will slow the, the shutter speed down to compensate for that and give you a balanced exposure. So that is aperture priority. Next round is M. And the M, as you might have guessed, stands for manual. So this is where you are now in control of the camera. So in manual, you are responsible for your settings. You're responsible for setting your shutter speed and your aperture and using the exposure meter, either through the viewfinder or on the live view, to get yourself a balanced exposure. So that's what the manual does. It's, it's giving you complete control of your camera. And this is where you'll start to get the most out of your camera. Once you start to understand that shutter speed records the movement within the, in the image, whether you want to freeze movement or whether you want to show movement, and aperture uh, controls your depth of field, whether you want everything in your image in focus or just the subject in focus and the background out of focus, then combining those two together using the manual settings is how you'll start to get more creative with your photography. And you know, you'll learn more about photography as you go. Next around, we have effects. 
And the the effects setting, it's it's to be honest, it's not something that I would ever use. It's um a bunch of filters that c- can be applied to the photograph within the camera. So y- you're not getting the the clean image that you you want every if you're adding effect to the image, then that's how the image is going to look. You can't change it back later on. So if you're doing it here in camera, but it's a, a bunch of uh, filters that are very similar to the kind of things you can do in Photoshop. Um, let's have a quick look and run through what they are. If you're on the effect setting, go to the back of your camera and press the info button on the back. That's going to light up your main screen here. And you can see in the top corner now we've got a little symbol and that's showing us that we're on what they're calling the night vision setting. Let's go back there and see on the screen there. So what the night vision setting will do is it will shoot the image in black and white in monochrome and use a very high ISO. It'll use a, uh, a very high ISO to record as much light as possible. You're probably going to have a slow shutter speed so I would definitely put it in a tripod if you're going to be using that setting. Um, but it's basically to, to kind of give that night vision kind of look. If we scroll along to the next one there, we've got color sketch. And what this is going to do, it's going to pick out the edges of your image and turn it into um, almost like a, a sketch drawing. I'm just going to go through these quickly because at some point I think we will do a video where we just go through the individual ones. The next they're calling miniature effect. And this will give you like a tilt shift effect. It'll... Um, uh, when the images look like they were taken of a model village. So it, it normally works if you're above your subject uh, and, and you give that weird depth of field. And what you do is you have the camera in live view and you choose the point of the image that you want in focus. Next along you have selective color. And what this will do, again you use it in live view and you, you, you can then pick a color from your image. Let's say you have a red telephone box uh, on a London street you can choose the red telephone box and the rest of the image will be in black and white and anything that's in red in that image will record in red. Next one along is silhouette. And what silhouette's going to do, it's going to expose for the brightest part of your, your subject. Uh, for instance, the, the sky and anything else that's in the foreground that's not lit will be a silhouette. Next along we have what they're calling high key. And this is going to give a really bright um, almost overexposed looking image to give that very uh, flooded with light kind of look. And the last effect that they have here is what they're calling low key. And this will do the opposite. This will give quite a dark looking image, quite a moody uh, looking image. But that's the effects. We'll go through at some point and actually shoot with the effects menu and see exactly what each of the different settings do. But that's your effects settings. Next round on the dial we have U1 and U2, not the band, but what these are are your user settings. And these allow you to, if you have a certain setting that you you, you shoot a lot and you, you have uh, you know, settings that you like to use, you can save them under these two settings. So you have U1 and U2, you have two user settings. And using the menu in the camera, you can set it up as you wish. For example, on this, I have U1 set as a video setting for the camera. So if I want to shoot a video, I just, instead of setting the camera completely up from scratch, I set it into U1 and it gives me a, a, a basic set of settings that I can start from for shooting video with the camera. So you've got two of those, U1 and U2, so you can have two different customized settings for yourself. And last on the dial, we have Scene. And what scene is, is uh, a bunch of custom settings within the camera that could allow you to use them for different situations. Um, if you, you know, all, sometimes auto can be fooled uh, and not work as well as you want. But if you're in specific situations, this has a bunch of different scenes that you can use. The, the, the custom settings that will set the camera up to make the best of those situations. Again, I'll do another video on all the scenes and we'll go through each of them individually. But let's have just a quick look at what we're looking at again. So again, same as with the effects, to actually see which scene we're on, if you press the info button on the back of your camera, and you can see at the top there, we've got a little picture of someone in a hat. And that is our portrait setting. And basically what the camera's going to do here, it's going to um, 
set the camera up so it gives you nice natural skin tones um, for your portraits. It's going to lower the aperture, give you a nice wide aperture so that you can get that uh, blurry background. And you can see here, yeah, you know, obviously I'm on OIS, up the ISO here. On this, on this setting, it's giving us uh, a, an F number of 2.8, which would give us that shallow depth of field. And it's saying under these lighting conditions, which aren't the brightest, it's saying 1 15th of a second. So it's setting it up so that you would get the best looking portrait. But again, what, one of the things I would suggest is you, if you play around with the scene modes, is use them as a way of learning your camera. What is the camera doing under each situation? Um, to allow you to get that image. So example, the, the, the main thing it's doing here is it's lowering the aperture to give you a wide aperture to give you that shallow depth of field. So let's go along to the next one. The next one we have is landscape. And what this is going to do is it's going to uh, give you a, a higher um, f-stop number. And it's also going to give you slightly more vivid colors to try and get the best out of your landscape. Next one along we have is child. And what this, this setting is going to do, it's going to give you, a, a very similar to portrait, except it's going to give a slightly more vivid color to your images to allow you to, you know, to give that, you know, that funkier look to images of children. Next along we have sport. And what sport's going to do is it's going to up the, um, shutter speed. So it allows you to freeze the, uh, the action. So yeah, it, 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 when you're shooting sport, obviously things are quite often moving fast. So that will speed the shutter speed up and allow you to get decent sport shots. Next one is close up. And this would be something you'd use if you had a macro lens and you were doing you know, images of flowers or insects or something like that. It'll set the camera up to give you the best function from that. But again, all of these things are, you know, the more you get into photography and the more you learn it, these techniques are things you can easily do in manual. These are all stuff that you can set yourself in manual as you learn the camera and learn more about photography. But as I said, they're a good place to start and they're a good way to, to learn what the camera's actually doing. Next one round we have night portrait. And what night portrait is going to do is going to allow you to fire the flash, but it's also going to slow the shutter speed down so that you're getting the ambient light so you can get, you know, a, a portrait in low light but still show some of the background, not have it as a dark background. Next, we have night landscape. And again, this is going to slow the shutter speed down to allow you to take those night cityscapes. It's probably going to slow it down enough the fact that you're going to want to put the camera on a tripod to be able to get those images. But that's what that setting is for. Next, we have party and indoor. And much like the, the night portrait, it's going to uh, allow ambient light to be recorded so that you can see the background and it's not just portraits against a black background. Next one we have is beach and snow. And this can, you know, cameras in auto can often be fooled with bright situations like uh, beach and snow because the camera sensor is, uh, um, exposure meter is looking for the lights and the darks and it will make an average exposure and in things like snow and beaches often there's a lot more bright than there are darks and your images can look overexposed this will bring the exposure down a little bit so you're recording the, the sand or the snow and the sea and you can get a decent image with that next one round we have is sunset and this is going to set the camera into like quite a vivid color looking mode it also probably slow the shutter speed down and again it's probably one you want to use a tripod with Next along is dusk and dawn. And again, this is going to, you know, for photographing in low light, it's going to slow the shutter speed down and bring out the best of the colors in the low light there. So that's the dusk and dawn setting. The next one along we have is pet portrait. And this is going to be very similar to the uh, children's portrait. Uh, it might, might use a slightly faster shutter speed just so that you catch the action of pets moving around quickly. Um, but that's basically what it is, quite vivid colors and uh, as fast as shutter speed. Next one along we have is candlelight. And as the name suggests, the idea here is that you can photograph in candlelight. So it's going to slow the shutter speed down to get you the ambient light settings to be able to capture candlelight. 
and take shots in that kind of lighting condition. Next one we have is Blossom. And again, it's for photographing flowers and uh, things like that. So it's gonna, much like the landscape, but it's gonna give you slightly more vivid colors so that you can capture the, the colors and the look of the flowers as you take them. Next one along is Autumn Colors. Again, this is gonna be set so that you can uh, get quite vivid boosting colors. I think what it does on this setting is it actually boosts the reds and the yellows to bring out more of those autumn colors in your photographs. And the final one we have here is food. And again, this would probably need to be on a tripod. It will slow the shutter speed down and it will uh, give a shallow depth of field to give that sort of food magazine kind of look. So I think, there we go. That's all of the scene modes look through. If we scroll back, now we're back to the original portrait one. So that's given us a complete circle around the mode dial. Uh, we're now going back to the auto and auto no flash. So hopefully that's given you an idea of what these functions do on the, the mode dial on your camera. As I said before, this, uh, this is on a Nikon D7100. they will be exactly the same on a Nikon D7200 and most of these settings will be the same on most Nikon cameras. On other DSLRs, the, the um, letters denoting them and the, the names that they're actually called might be different, but the functions will be the same. The C modes might be different, but the, the, certainly the auto, the program, the shutter priority, aperture priority, and the manual settings will all be similar on all DSLRs. So hopefully this has helped. I'm Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.